Hello, this is Reese from Waypoint, and in this video we're going to go through the new production scheduler beta that has been released by Deer. Now in my previous video I went through the production module that has been added in beta, some of the settings and some of the things to be aware of um, to go to build the production module and how to set it up in your system at a basic level. Now there have been some additional changes to that as uh, Deer continue to develop on this um, particular module in beta, but as of a week or so ago, they have released the scheduler and also the capacity planner uh, module. Um, so you can start seeing um, some of those areas in action now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the scheduler component. And what this does is it shows your production uh, orders on a Gantt chart. Now there's different ways of actually interacting with this, different ways of viewing your data, and there's a lot of things still in development. For instance, here we see a progress column next to the two production orders I've actually got in this time period. It's currently showing 0%, but this will, over time, uh, show the percent increase as different uh, modules and different times actually progressed um, through the production order. So here we can expand each of these production runs. Um, we can actually see that we're going to run two for this particular production order and we're into run one here and we have different stages that um, are being completed. Now from here you can even complete current st stages that have been started. So if I press complete here on the mashing we will get an alert saying that it will use the standard components and resources um, in as part of the bill of materials essentially saying that hey I'm going to use your default values you've set up in your BOM. Um, we're not going to be using any of the say variants or any kind of customization that may have occurred in that period where let's say you did use uh, more um, of one resource than another. Um, you wouldn't be dictating this, it would use whatever the standard recipe is. We hit proceed and that will actually complete this stage and we can move through to starting the next stage. Um, we get iconography changing as we progress through um, to signify what has actually been completed, what has been started um, and what is um, awaiting. On the right hand side we actually get this Gantt chart here. These red lines indicate uh, dependencies. This is telling us that this particular stage is dependent on this particular stage here being completed before it can actually commence. You'll also see some color coding there as far as um, the, the mashing there going a darker purple to indicate it's complete. We also see in the timeline of the run and the um, end of the larger production order that those have become darker there to indicate that those areas have been completed as far as time is concerned. Looking down here at the fermentation, you might not notice there are some stripes on this. This is because the fermentation um, stage in this particular demonstration has particular operating hours during the day. So we're seeing here when it can and can't be worked by color coding um, throughout the day. Some other things to be aware of is you can actually filter um, this by selective um, periods, including a custom filter to, to increase the actual um, uh, period that you are reporting on. This enables you to actually scroll through and see a, quite a large um, amount there. So give me two seconds. Fantastic. So another thing to be aware of are uh, there's filters for three different conditions here at this stage. Apologies about that, I swiped back. Um, we do actually have three filters here for buffer, work center, and resource. So for instance, you can look at things that are within 80 to 100% of their time buffer, or even things as overdue, overdue and the different um, degrees of buffer there as well. You can focus on specific work centers, so say the boiler room, mash room, the fermentation, this beer brewing um, demonstration. And also here we have our resources, the individual resources, for instance, focusing on say boiler labor, um, which will then um, enable you to actually filter the, the view type by only things affected there. Another thing to be aware of is you have the full screen mode here, which will bring this particular view into um, full screen. We have an edit mode, which um, is currently still in progress. What the edit mode will enable you to do is actually um, adjust these particular, uh, say, stages or the production modules, maybe you could drag and drop and move them around, and also create new dependencies. For instance, if we wanted this particular production order to, say, 
um, be dependent on the boiling stage being complete, we could actually create a dependency there, which would mean that this here would have to be complete and this is dependent on it, which will mean that the scheduling will react um, to that for this particular um, production order responding to the boiler being complete or not. At this stage, um, you can't actually do too much editing, um, but that is coming in the future. There is a tutorial, but there's also this additional settings here. This here enables you to do some other things with your view, such as expanding all of these automatically. It also enables you to um, customize removing things like horizontal vertical lines, removing dependencies if you don't want to actually view them. Also, um, showing completed um, productions or stages. This enables you here to actually see things that may have just recently com um, completed in that time period and how they're affected. Um, hiding or showing weekends, um, especially valuable if you are doing production over weekends, and also showing a little preview of the resource consumption as well. Now if I refresh this view here, we can actually see that we're um, seeing the max uh, hours per day of each of these, we're seeing the individuals available, and here we're getting the actual potential consumption of these, and this will be color coded as it gets closer to the actual capacity of those. The other screen we've got here is the um, planning option. The planning option enables you to actually see um, production orders that have been authorized but haven't been released. So you want to think of released as commit to schedule. You might actually authorize a bunch of your production um, orders in advance and then you'll choose when you're going to release them and commit them to your schedule. You can do this by simply selecting them here and pressing release, but you can also do the same from the individual production module as well. And this is just showing you where all of your hypothetical planned um, uh, orders are coming in as far as their, their date is concerned. Touching um, quickly back on the production view here, we have different views for different shop floors if you have multiple and a search. And the other final adjustment is the view from hours, day or week to adjust the actual um, view type of the GAN chart here. The resource selection here breaks down not by uh, what we saw here where it is by production, but actually shows the individual resources that are in your account and also their particular consumption and when exactly that's planned. Breaking each one of these down, you can see um, specifically which production order is consuming it, how long their cycle is for that particular uh, machine, labor, or other resource, and you can see what's affecting that over the timeline as well. The sales section is yet to be developed. This will actually um, provide you insight of sales that are responsible of triggering a um, production order themselves, and you'll be able to see their impact um, here as well, but that is still a work in progress. The other section here is the capacity planner. The capacity planner is best to be thought of as the product or inventory availability screen, but instead it's for your resources. If you're familiar with the inventory availability screen, it gives you a breakdown of what's on order, what's um, allocated to current orders, and what your current stock levels are. Think of it in the same way. Here we've got a list of all the resources um, that are in this particular production module, where we have individual bits of labor, we have um, machinery. We can see here how many we have available in total over the selected period of time. We see how many are available. We see how many are allocated i.e. how many are planned to be consumed by particular production orders, and how many have already been consumed. The available is simply the total less the allocated less the consumed to show a running total of how much you can potentially um, have available there. You can also show over allocated. I'm not sure I have a great example here, but this would mean that you're either hiding or showing um, items that um, have far more allocated than you actually have available, enabling you to focus on those and potentially solve those um, allocation problems. The date period enables you to actually move forward or back in time, um, but you'll generally be selecting this with the time period that is, that is more suitable for your production runs.
You can also filter by specific resources. Whoop, let me just refresh this page. <laughs> Keep in mind that this is a beta, so you um, would be running into a few errors from here to here as development continues. You can filter by specific resources here and also filtering by particular shop floors if you have multiple there. But that's the capacity planner. Now there's been some additions to the settings area that at this stage don't directly um, impact the scheduler uh, Gantt chart that we saw, but does affect your ability to visualize um, how things are going as far as your productions are concerned. If we go into the production settings here, we see that a new section for suspend reasons has been added. This enables you per work center to actually give a name for a reason why that could be, say, put on hold or suspended. Say, um, here for the fermentation room, let's just say that this um, needs a cleaning reason. If we're cleaning the tanks for the fermentation, then that would be a good reason for that to be put on hold. We can add these in and hit save, um, though we have, ironically, an error there. Let's ignore that for now. <laughs> and this will enable you when you're entering a um, stage of production that uses the fermentation room to select cleaning as a way of putting that particular stage um, into suspension. Currently you can't do that from the, the scheduling view and you can't see anything that is um, suspended in the scheduling view, but I would assume that that will be coming at some point. Instead you'll be able to see it within the production order and in the production order list. So that's a quick overview of the schedule and the capacity planner that's been added as part of the um, Deer production module beta. Um, feel free to have a play and if you have more questions in relation to how to set this up or understanding some of the setup, please let us know and also um, view our previous video recorded. Take care.